during Lent, we begin with the penitential order. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Numbers, verse 4 through 9. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, and the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food no, and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit any man, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. Here ends the reading.
The psalm for today is Psalm 107, verse 17 through 22. Some were sick through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love and for his wonderful works to the sons of men. And let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. Here ends the song. A reading from John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning gives us one of those great stories of the Israelites whining and complaining like spoiled children. And they are out of immediate danger, so the discomfort of their surroundings is setting in, and they're feeling all angry and resentful towards Moses and God and, and uh, wanting better uh, things to eat and drink. And so it's almost like God has one of those bad parent moments where, you know, you, you, the old cliche about, you better stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. God says, all right, you think that's bad, and then sends some snakes. So then they're like, help, help, snakes, we're scared. And interestingly, God as, as every clever parent knows, parlays this situation into a teaching moment. So you have this pattern throughout the Old Testament with the, with the Israelites in, in the desert where you know they start with the whining and the complaining and the misbehaving and then they get punished, and then they're sorry, and then they're a little better, and, this, and the cycle starts over again, much like raising children. And so God says to Moses to make a bronze serpent and put it on a stick and put it in the ground. So hoist up a bronze serpent. And whoever gazes upon the serpent will be healed of the, the snake bite of the ill. 
And that's very interesting because, you know, again, it's kind of like fashioning an idol out of that which represents their sin, their shortcoming, their failing. And so rather than God simply saying, okay, here's a clay jar filled with antivenom, you know, take some of this and you will be healed. Rather, gazing upon, beholding, taking in the means by which they became ill provides the very means of their salvation, of their healing. God is holding up a mirror through the image of this bronze serpent and saying, if you really gaze at this, take it in, then you will be healed. Now, Flash forward to John's gospel, where Jesus is having this nighttime conversation with Nicodemus, who comes to him and is asking about his teachings. And Jesus refers back to this story and says, just like Moses lifted up the serpent, he, Jesus, will be lifted up on the cross. There is a direct parallel here of what the crucifixion means, its significance, with what God did with the Israelites. Jesus also becomes the means by which the world is healed. And so, just like God parlaying the misbehavior of the Israelites into a teaching moment with this serpent, Jesus going to the cross is doing the same thing. Jesus is holding up a mirror. Jesus' broken body is in, is becomes the image of our broken humanity. It becomes the very result of our behavior of violence towards each other. Jesus going to the cross is the embodiment of the illness of the poison, the venom of what we do to each other out of our anger, resentment, violence, addiction, avoidance, denial, projection, domination, all those things that we do that are, that are not in keeping with the love of God and that lead to the atrocities of how we treat each other and treat the world. All of that becomes embodied in Jesus who absorbed that very treatment and was lifted up on the cross so that we, like the Israelites, can behold it. And by beholding it, by looking at it, by gazing at it, by taking it in, the very means of our destruction, the poison, the venom, becomes the very means of our salvation, of our healing by allowing Jesus going to the cross to be that mirror of our own sinfulness, it becomes the means by which 
we can experience healing. We can receive the anti-venom of love, as it were. But it is completely our choice whether we wish to do that or not. We don't necessarily want our resentments taken away from us. We don't necessarily want to face some of the harsh truths. There are a lot of ways in which avoidance and denial is working well for us. I'll keep my addictions, thank you very much. I'll get help if I need it. It's our choice. We're invited. It is an invitation of love. So as Deacon Mark said to us recently, we aren't punished for our sins. We're punished by our sins. So at this point in Lent, I invite you to reflect on what the bronze serpent in your life might look like. What is it that God would put on a stick and plant in front of you and tell you that the way to health, the way to healing, the way to wholeness, the way to holiness is by gazing at that bronze depiction and seeing that that very means of poison in your life, in your heart, by facing that, that is the very means of deliverance, salvation, healing. So we know that the cross is not about God's demand, but rather it is the result of our actions. And God meets those actions with love, always love. And Jesus going to the cross showed him going the distance to embody that love. So the invitation is there, waiting for us to gaze, to open ourselves, and to respond. Amen.
Let us pray for the church and the world. Embraced by God's word, let us intercede for all those in need, saying, Have mercy, O Lord. For the church, that our Lenten hunger may be for justice and our thirst for deeds of justice. We pray, here, have mercy, O Lord. For the church, that all those to be baptized at Easter may see through the dazzling attractions of sin and rejoice only in God's marvelous gift. We pray, have mercy, O Lord. For the community of nations, that the worth of every life may compel us on the way to solidarity and peace, we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For exiles and refugees, that all who are homeless because of war or hunger, because of the greed or hatred of others, because of disabilities, may find places of rest and kindness, we pray. Have mercy, O Lord. For those who struggle with addictions, that they may find strength and love for the simple gifts of God, we pray, have mercy, O Lord. For this assembly, God's handiwork, that our steps be directed in ways of peace that lead us to the side of those that the world despises and that we name these rejected ones our brothers and sisters. We pray, have mercy, O Lord. We pray for the repose of the soul of Jim Drake and Joan Hodges this morning as they have been called into the near presence of God. God, full of goodness and open to weakness, remember all whom we remember and remind us of all whom we would forget. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.